Hey guys, it's your girl Tampkin Spice and I am back with a different video today. You guys know that I normally do videos on tools and tech for body and beauty, which means I vlog about Botox, filler, lift, tuck, surgery, non-surgery, skin tightening, all that good stuff, right? Yes, I do vlog about that, but what I want to vlog about well what what i want to vlog about in addition to that is just self-improvement in general i think as a woman of color it's really important to talk about kind of the journey that i've taken in my education and my career to be in a position where now I'm, you know, I'm totally working my dream job, making really great money, and I still have enough work-life balance to pursue my other streams of income and pursue trying to be some type of a YouTuber like now. With that, if you like videos about improving your beauty, improving your appearance, and improving yourself in terms of career finance and holistically yourself, then please consider hitting that subscribe button because it will help me and I strive to help you. So with that, let's get started. One of the topics that I always talk about whenever I'm at a party or around a crowd is to talk about my journey into becoming who I am today. And you know, that's a very personal thing because everybody's journey is, is unique. Everybody's got their own story and their own path that they take. And I am a children of immigrant. My family immigrated to the United States in 94 from Bangladesh, which is a third world country. Bangladesh is over on the east side near India and Nepal kind of close to like Burma. There's a lot of political tension over there. There's a lot of poverty over there and there's the literacy rate is pretty low in that area of the world where I come from. My parents came here when I was six years old. So you guessed it, I'm 33 now. They really came out here because there was very few opportunities to succeed out in Bangladesh and they wanted to provide me an opportunity to succeed, I guess. But obviously I think everybody's parents just do the best they can with the tools they have. And coming out here was just something that they thought would better their lives. I'm not going to get into their lives, okay? This is about my life. This is about what I can bring to you from a lessons learned perspective. I had a standard childhood, picked up English pretty quick. I went through K through 12, no problem. But when it came to college, I was always pressured to pursue a career in medicine. Every Desi family, every Indian, Bengali, Pakistani parent wants their child to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. And I think that's a really unfair because there's so many types of people out in the world and there's so many roles to fill and there's so many ways to become a productive member of society. I definitely feel like being a child of Bengali immigrant parents, that was the only option I had. And that was the only way that I could prove to be of value to my parents or a good kid. I, you know, I definitely was very competitive and um, very studious as a child. You know, I got straight A's. I had the honor roll. I um, decided to do pre-med for college. And once I started pre-med for college, that's when I realized that I hate the healthcare field. <laughs> I don't hate it. What I mean is I just, it's not me. Like I, uh, it's just not me. I did biotech for my undergrad. So I was locked in a basement lab retory for like hours and hours, like working on a microscope. Like it was just like just strenuous, boring work. It was very antisocial. Like I'm a very social person. I needed to be around people. And I also had a really hard time with organic chemistry as a lot of people do. So I failed that class a lot of times. And I actually took a little bit of a break from college because I was failing organic chemistry so much that I started working. At that point, I didn't know whether or not I wanted to finish college anymore. You know, I had I had a period of time where I really questioned whether or not a degree was going to provide me value. I got into sales, you know, just general sales and marketing. When I say sales and marketing, I don't mean like corporate sales and marketing. I'm talking about I'm selling you stuff at the mall. OK, I was a mall girl. I worked at a kiosk for a long time, just early career. I did cash for goals for a while. I sold direct TV inside malls, Best Buys, Costco's. I was one of those direct TV people. You know, it was a little bit of a multi-level marketing gig that I got myself into where, you you, know, you try to sell stuff and then you train somebody to sell stuff and then you open up an office. I definitely learned the value of hard work and knowing how to handle rejection because sales is hard. People tell you no, people tell you to you know go pound sand and you have to be able to get over that and you have to be able to move on to the next customer and you have to be on the hunt. So I developed like a very strong work ethic. I developed like an unbreakable attitude and I always, always, always knew I could do better. Those are the things I learned from being out making commission only on sales, but it was a 
a, it was a hard life. I was only making about like a thousand dollars a week if I was doing well. After tax, it wasn't that much money. You know, after tax, it was probably there were weeks where I made five hundred dollars. I was making around like two thousand dollars a month on average, four thousand on good in a good month. But it wasn't always just good month after good month, especially in sales. Like I would have to give my sales to people I was training sometimes to help you know boost their motivation but that was like I just gave you $150 because I need you to feel good about yourself so you can sell more so that someday I will be benefited from it and it was just kind of it's just how it is I just got tired of it I got just so tired of commission you know like just having to work for commission and like sometimes I wouldn't get commission sometimes I would I took some really really good lessons from that kind of workplace I ended up um, finding work at a tech startup and they were just hiring you know everybody I built some relationship where um, they you know they believed that I brought some value to the table and I was working for free for a long time I was doing kind of like, a, like an internship style gig where I was trying to sell some advertising packages to people for a company that didn't really exist yet I just couldn't do it for free anymore I just had no money so I asked one of the directors just point blank is there a position here for me can you help me because I can't I want to be here I want to be in this tech startup but I can't afford to do it for free is there something you can give me and they found a position for me they they created a position for me and then I made two thousand dollars a month in that position so I was like yay oh my god I have like a nine to five that was my first nine to five job before then I was working at the mall I was working at Best Buy I was working at Costco I was working retail environment once I started working in that tech startup that was honestly one of the biggest growth periods of my life because a startup company offers you the opportunity to wear whatever hat you want if you see a problem you solve it I had a really good time working there and there was some other drama that was happening in the company so people started to quit over time you know 95 percent of startups fail so this was kind of headed in that failing direction all it meant for me was each person that quits is one more job that i can learn how to do so i ended up proving myself in many different areas earning the corner office and like being able to do the job of a director of operations i mean without the title of course you know it was one of the situations where it's like i'm not trained to do this and the ceo and the, the vice president will just say hey figure it out and I'm like okay well I guess I have to figure it out that was just an amazing opportunity for a person like me who wants to figure it out you know um, it, it really helped me get over my fear of uh, a fear of feeling like maybe I can't do something and I already got over my fear of failure when you're in sales you fail every day but you get over it you move on because if you linger on your failure you don't you don't grow right so I was making two thousand dollars a month there and then then the company really started to go down so I jumped I found another company where I was going to do phone sales and it's a call center at the startup I actually created an entire call center a consultant came in helped us and we figured it out and then I went to go work at a call center and I realized that it was like a farm it was like a whole ocean of cubicles and you're just sitting there doing phone call after phone call after phone call you know all those spam calls you get from travel companies I didn't do quite that but it was very similar where they'll just dial for you and you're like hi hi may, may I speak to uh, Jonathan Frazier Jonathan I did that hey a lot of people tell you to you know go you drown yourself in an ocean somewhere but you know you just say okay well I'll take you off the list thank you and then you just move on the pattern here is I'm continuing to build my thick skin and now I'm like you know entering like my early 20s eventually I decide I can't do the call center stuff anymore I start looking for work I get another job at an ad agency that's in uh, Long Beach I don't know what's going on with that ad agency anymore but that was probably I only spent three months there it was the worst job I've ever had in my life where the owner of the company was just like extremely abusive it would call us name stomp her feet throw her computer at us like it was wild and we're working 80 hours a week we're traveling partying like drinking with clients it was hard work ultimately if I calculated how many hours I was putting in versus what my salary was supposed to be I was supposed to be making three thousand dollars a month there so you know I've been moving my way up with two thousand dollars the tech startup jumped over a call center went to an ad agency now making three thousand dollars a month this is all within like a year at that place I was just working 80 hours a week, every, seven days a week. It was just wild. I lost so much weight. I was just struggling. You know, they made me move out to Long Beach. It was required for me to live there. Um, and and now whenever I see anybody ask for, you must live in the area, must be local. It's a red flag for me when I look at a job because it means that you're gonna be working all kind of crazy hours that you might get called in. So, hey, you know what? I fell into it. I signed a one year lease. What am I gonna do? So I would only get a 30 minute lunch break for my 10 hour days that I was working. I would drive home 
for the 30 minute lunch break. It would take me like five minutes to drive home. I would hop on my computer and I would spend 20 minutes applying for jobs and then 10 minutes driving back to work. And I just wouldn't eat until I got home at night. Like that is what I did and finally I ended up finding one more job to get out of there and that job was to go work at a new horizons which is like a technical training sales company it was still sales i was still doing advertising and sales but this was more of like a call center but much smaller scale it wasn't like a cubicle farm it was just like a few desks 10 coworkers. we all kind of got along it was really fun it was very technical i was selling training to coders and it people and hackers i learned about c plus and c plus plus and red hat and black hat and like understanding the Microsoft stack, understanding networks, understanding infrastructure. Like they put me through an entire month of training, paid training to like learn all this stuff. So I just like soaked it up like a sponge and I could talk the talk. And I worked there for maybe, maybe like four months. I don't know how long it was. I got like two months of training and then two months before I actually, this was the job I got fired from. During that job, one of the benefits was they provide you unlimited free training. Having been kind of like working in the field kind of person, like working retail, working at you know, I haven't really had too much of a nine to five experience, just a little bit, you know, I've had some, and now I'm working nine to five consistently, but you know what I mean? I haven't had like that professional experience. So I took that time to do like all of the Microsoft Office trainings, all of the deep Microsoft Word trainings. Like Microsoft Word, I know you think you just write papers. Microsoft Word can do a lot of stuff. You can actually write VBA, like, which is Visual Basic. I learned about Visual Basic. I took all the hardcore levels of Excel, PowerPoint, learning how to do crazy stuff, in Microsoft Outlook. I learned a little bit of programming language. I learned all this stuff on my free time while I was working at this technical training company and I was fired. It was an interesting story how I got fired though because I've done sales for a really, really long time and I'm really comfortable in the sales environment. I'm comfortable starting conversations. I'm comfortable asking for the sale. Give me your money. Yeah, yeah, give, give me your money. The, the technical training company was now a $40,000 job. I'm increasing my salary at every step I take. One of the things I did recently was I intended, I manifested, I, I put my intention to the universe that I wanted to make more money and I bought some citrine crystals, which are crystals that are supposed to attract wealth and abundance. And I sprinkled them all around my desk at work and I got fired. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, I just got fired. I was like, okay, I got fired. I have bills to pay. I have an apartment to keep. Let me apply for unemployment. This is the only time in my life I've been on unemployment. And um, I had a little bit of savings and I had credit cards to live on. I applied for 30 jobs a day. Like I, that was my job. Applying for jobs became my job. Ultimately, I found this one ad that spoke to me. Like I was just like, whoa. But let's just say it's a, it was a childhood dream of mine to work in this industry. And I applied and, you know, they reached out to me. I came in to interview. I didn't have my degree. Remember, I had I was still trying to get my degree, but I, I was playing like I did. Once I interviewed, like I was just like so in love with the position. Like it was so perfect for me. I knew I could do a good job. Like it was it was the next step for me. And it was the industry that I loved. Once they told me that they wanted me for the job, I was flipping out. But then they asked me for my college transcript. And that's when I was like, oh. I was like, I don't really have my degree. Instead of being angry with me, the person who wanted me for the job actually found it hilarious that I was so sneaky. And he told me, I'll give you the job, but you need to go back and you need to finish. And I did, I did. I went back and I finished right away while I was working. And in fact, as I was working at this this company, I, I finally got like a stable work environment. Like I would come in at eight and I would go home at five and I would have a one hour lunch. And I had, I actually took a little bit of a salary cut. So I went from 40,000, to 38,000, but they actually gave me this huge retirement package where I was actually getting 25% of my salary put into a retirement account every year. So on the grand scheme of things, I was making more money. So I stayed there for almost a little over five years. During the time I was there, the company benefits were that they would pay for a degree. So I started getting my master's and um, I enrolled, I got approved and I started doing my master's in tech management online, it was an MBA. And I pursued my master's for the next two years and I would work from nine to five. And then from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., I would do homework and do classes. And on weekends, I would write papers. And that's what I did from 2014 to 2016. That's just what I was doing. You know, I was really happy with my work and I was happy with the people I was working with. It was very stable, like I said, but something was missing. Like my salary wasn't really increasing. And I've, I've jumped a few times before. And remember, I'm coming from 
you know, making $500 a week, you know, I was making like minimum wage before. I started noticing that the people around me seemed to, you know, be going to nice lunches. I, I was packing my lunch every day. Like I was pretty frugal. I noticed that the people around me were, had nice things and did nice things and, you know, had better quality of life maybe, drove nicer cars. I started wondering, and this is where it's really important because I think it's important for people to talk about money because I wasn't talking about money. I never talked to people about how much money I made or anything, but a couple of coworkers that did the same job as me, we went out for a drink. I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm not making very much money. Like, what do you guys think? And I blurted out my number. I was like, I'm making 40,000. And they were like, they were like, what? You have a master's and you've got six years of industry experience. They just flat out told me the white males that were doing the exact same work as I was with less degrees were making $110,000, 100 to $110,000 on average with less education than me, equal experience, but they were white males. There was a discrepancy that I saw and I was in complete shock that I understand that this discrimination happens but I never thought it would have happened to me. Another thing that's illegal now, did you know that nobody is allowed to ask you how much money you make when they're interviewing you for a position? Well, when I was interviewing with this company, they asked me for check stubs. So they based the salary that they offered to me based on the salary I was already making. So that makes it harder for me to make more and more money. They're starting me off super low because they can. They know I'll take it. Once I found out that on average, I, I talked to three people at this point and they were making significantly higher money than I am. There was one girl who was a brown girl that also had less education than me who was considered for the same position. She was offered 65000 to do that position, but as a subcontractor. So they had margin on that. That means they could have paid her probably 75 or whatever. But still, I was making forty. All the white men were making one hundred to one hundred thousand dollars and another brown female was offered $65,000. So I was the lowest of them all. So what did I do? I went straight to management and I told them, I was like, hey, I've been talking about money and uh, it looks like I'm far below everybody else. You know what they told me? They said, that is frowned upon. Ladies, you need to remember, it is not illegal for you to talk about your salary and it is not illegal for coworkers and yourself to share salary information with each other as long as you're doing so by your own consent. The only entity that is protected because you're not talking about your money is the company itself. They have created this etiquette. It's not a law, it's etiquette to ensure that folks are just happy with what they make and they don't strive for market value, they strive for the value they have been assigned. Fuck that, fuck that. I decided at that point, you know, now they were like kind of like gaslighting me and putting me down and you know, the company management came to me and were saying, well, you only have one year of experience. I'm like, what do you mean? I've been with you guys for almost six years. What are you talking about? You know, they started like saying weird things to me, justifying the reason why I'm so low, you know, in my salary range. I decided, you know what? It's fine. Let me just find out how much I'm worth by going on interviews. So I spruced up my resume and I went on a few interviews and I had multiple offers. Guess for how much? 100 to $120,000. That was how much my value was. Now that I had a master's degree, almost six years of experience in that specific industry, and I had other, you know, certifications that I had collected along the way. Remember, I was always trying to, you know, whatever your company offers, I'll pay for certifications, pay for degrees, whatever. I was always doing that on the side. I was never just coming home and like scrolling through social media. I was always trying to better myself. So by this time, I knew that I could leave today and get a job for $120,000. This is the point where I'm gonna stop talking about money because I don't wanna make myself a target on YouTube. So let's just say I took this next job, okay? I took this next job. I was now making market value. Again, I, it, was, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone what this work was, but I threw myself into it. I took enough time off to study up and learn this new software that I was gonna have to manage when I was at this new job. I worked there for about a year and a half, loved it. I mean, they made me grow exponentially when I was over there. And there, at that job, I was doing a lot more. I had a lot more responsibility and it was a lot more critical work and it was a lot more professional work. And at this point, at this next 18 months that I was spent at this company, I was very, very happy, but again, I wanted to grow into the next position. Now I was just used to growing. I had to grow, otherwise I would be miserable. And I knew what was next for me. I knew what position I wanted 
to be in next. Again, advocated for myself. I talked to everybody that I could about what I wanted. I didn't just stay there and hope somebody gave me a raise or hope somebody whatever. No, I would talk about, hey, I want to do this next job. I'm really interested. How do I qualify? Oh, okay, you need these you know, 17 things. Okay, great. I believe I have six of them. How can I get the next 11 thing? Oh, okay. I could do this, this, and that. Will that guarantee? You know what I mean? Like I was advocating for myself, but I also always had a path to where I could earn the next thing. Unfortunately at that company, I don't think that that path would have been feasible in a reasonable amount of time for me. So at that point, again, my loyalty is to myself and to my mission. And what is my mission is to make my industry better and continue to evolve and shift this industry that I'm in. Eventually, I knew it was time, so I put myself out there again. At this point, I knew I had leverage. I knew I had a significant amount of industry experience. I had coming up in eight years of industry experience, and I was very confident. I knew a lot of big players in that industry. I had a brand for myself. People knew me. I was able to increase my salary by like, not gonna talk about money anymore. And once I came to this current position that I'm in, which I'm really, really happy, I always paid attention to what was going on in industry. Obviously, rule number one is kill it at your job. Kill it. Do the best you can do and blow everybody else out of the water. My, my goal was always to be the best. First, you do that. Second, you keep your eyes open for little bullshit opportunities. Okay, bullshit opportunities meaning what? Are they paying for your education? Okay, get it, get more education. Are they paying for certifications? Okay, get certifications. Are they paying for you to be members of certain, you know, industry specific clubs or improvement groups? Become a member, you know, go to their dinners, have the company pay for your dinner. And also on top of that, the little bullshit thing that um, stands out too, sometimes they have these little nominate each other for a little award thing. Figure out a way to get nominated. Call up your homie and be like, hey, what's up? You gonna send me that nomination or what? You know, I mean, I was doing all of that stuff just because you have to do all of it. And because I was doing that stuff for this last couple of years that I've been in this company, salary that I was hired at, I was able to increase. Yeah, we're still not talking about numbers just over this last year. Now I'm in a really, really good position because folks who call me to recruit me, they cannot offer me less than what I'm making. And the industry I'm in is so lucrative that there are plenty of people that are willing to pay above and beyond. It puts me in a very good position in life to be able to negotiate what I want because I have the skill set and the certifications, the degrees and experience that they desire. What is the moral of the story? Moral of the story is never be quiet and accept what you've been given. Always continue to improve yourself. Always strive to be the best you can be always know what's out there. You don't ever have to feel like, well, this is the job I have. Oh my God, I have 10, I'm working 10 hours a day. Like when I think about the ad agency I worked in Long Beach for, I was dying. Like I was working 10 hours a day, every single day, seven days a week. I had a one 30 minute lunch break to myself. And when I got home, I was exhausted. I still had to shower and cook and whatever, right? In those 30 minutes, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. I would come home, I would spruce up my resume for 10 minutes, drive back. Next day, come home, apply for one job, drive back. The next day, apply for two jobs. Like, it doesn't matter. I was so hungry to make myself better and to be able to live a certain caliber of life that it didn't matter to me what obstacle I went through, I was gonna get through it. And I knew, I 100% knew. Like, you have to also know, right? The law of attraction, you manifest it for yourself. I knew I was gonna be this person. I know I'm going to be, I know I am the highest caliber. You have to think that way. And once you like open your mind to that and are willing to work as hard as you possibly can, those lessons I learned when I was selling stuff in the mall or, you know, selling direct TV to random people in Best Buy, like you learn that, you know, people will tell you no and people will, will hate you and tell you to go pound sand. But at the end of the day, that's a part of life. And the better you can deal with it and the thicker skin you have and the better attitude you have, the relentless hunger to learn and continue to improve yourself, that is all you need to be successful in life. But remember, People are out there to put you down too. Look at what, I, what happened to me. Like I discovered that there was a gender inequality in workplace compensation. There was potential racial inequality there too. And I'm noticing, you know, the most of the leadership for companies that I'm working for, they are old white men. I have motherfucking arrived. So make room. And that is the attitude that I have. I'm not gonna wait for somebody to die so I can have an opportunity. <laughs> I'm going to push somebody to the side. And I hope you do too, my beautiful ladies. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I really hope that you are striving to achieve the dreams that you have set for yourself. Please consider liking and subscribing. And let me know, this is my first time doing non 
um, body modification topic. This is a life modification topic. So let me know in the comments if you like this video or if I'm just like out of my lane right now. So I don't know. I'll see if I get, you know, more views on this or, or less. I'll figure it out. The algorithm will tell me. Until then, bye. Oh, wait, I'm not doing bye anymore. Toodles.